Hey everyone, I'm Lin Lin, and I want a break. We have been taking ourselves pretty seriously lately, so let's talk about something fun today, as we talk about my favourite children's card game, Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, this is gonna be fun, right? The game where we have cards that are written with enough text that they make the act man cope and seethe about how he doesn't want to read. Just because Konami releases a set of cards that I think are really busted or stupid or I don't want to be to read them. But wait, as is the case with the time that I wanted to talk about Pokemon, we don't really get to have fun here because this world sucks. So it looks like we're gonna have some pretty serious stuff to go over today that I wanted to talk about for a while, but I had been busy with other things. Speaking of other videos, subscribe to the channel, everyone. I'm an up-and-coming commentator trying to support myself making the content that I love to make, so if you could just take that two seconds out of your day to make sure that you have subscribed, that would be fantastic. It's free and you can always change your mind if I really am turbo cringe. And with that said, let's talk about the Yu-Gi-Oh drama that took the Yu-Gi-Oh community by storm. YCS Lion 2023. Before we can really get stuck into the situation itself, we must go over the important context surrounding it first. And due to this, we must begin our story with a user called Starstrike Duelist, aka Sam. Sam was a Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTuber who was quite popular in her time as a content creator. However, something that did make her quite well known throughout the community would be the way that she had publicly worked with someone named Chris LeBlanc. LeBlanc was someone who had quite a lot of respect within the community himself, as he had made several accomplishments within the game, claiming in the description of his YouTube channel to have four Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series event wins under his belt, and placing very highly in other tourneys too. LeBlanc was a very accomplished player within the competitive scene, and that's something that made what went down in January of 2023 very surprising, as it was at this point that Sam had released a twit longer about LeBlanc, where she details some very disgusting behaviour she alleged that LeBlanc had taken. My story, featuring Chris LeBlanc dear, all. I hope this message finds you well. I am messaging you in regards to one of your peer players, Christopher LeBlanc. I have been silent on this matter for over two years, as I had no real reason to share because Christopher was not present in our community. Now that he has a presence, I find the need to share the story of this predator who has hurt me among many others. Christopher and I were in a partnership for about five years. During this time, he emotionally me through physical and situations. He got caught in pathological lying behavior, cheated on me, and told me the only way he would stop was that if I performed favors for him. He knew I wanted to wait to have yet he told me as was the only way he would stop lying. I remember crying in the lobby of apparent parenthood by myself because I didn't know anything about birth control and had no help. I was scared and alone. As time went on, and things didn't get better, he started to get physically violent with items around us. He would hit and break things, and to the extent where we once lied to doctors at a hotel because he had bashed in a mirror and I lied for him so we wouldn't get questioned for physical abuse. Towards the end of our relationship, he threatened me if I didn't stay with him, in which ended up with him crashing and totaling his car in attempt of which is why he was in the mental hospital. He himself as a threat when I called him a liar, and this went on for years. After we separated, I found out among the other things he lied about, he had been using on multiple of occasions while lying about being sober as well as cheating on me on at least one known occasion. These are only a few of the horrid things he did over the course of the five years we were together. I hope you will read this and consider my story. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Although you have no reason to believe my word over his, I believe only someone truly sick could make this up. You are free to confront him about these situations, as I'm sure he will admit to almost all of it if he has any good left in him. Thank you. Yeah, that's some pretty gross stuff. Thankfully, LeBlanc would release his response to this the next day, and I must say that I definitely do have a few choice words about it. My response to the allegations. I was a shitty boyfriend, but I never sexually or physically assaulted her. This was a relationship when we were young and I'm happy to move away from that. I've gotten a lot of threats and intimidation from a lot of people I would never wish that on anyone. Also please don't harass her, please be supportive of her as well. I appreciate all the support I've received. I can't wait to start creating more content for all of you guys. This should go without saying, but when you're responding to allegations of this magnitude, there is definitely something fishy going on if your response basically amounts to, I didn't break the law and I'm better now, also pity me based on things I don't prove in any way either. Also, like and subscribe. This response is incredibly infuriating as it quite frankly doesn't seem that LeBlanc is taking the situation very seriously at all. He seems to view the situation 
situation as an utter joke if this is all he has to say. Accused of something as serious as SA? That's not something that should amount to little more than a footnote at the very beginning of your response. Especially when the rest of the response bears little to no weight on the actual situation itself. As most of this response barely even interacts with Sam's allegations at all. Now, one thing that should be made abundantly clear here is that there is still the possibility for LeBlanc to be innocent here. As while Sam did release multiple screenshots between her and LeBlanc, showing some pretty guilt-trippy behaviour on his end if I do say so myself, there is still room for this conversation to not even be with him and for Sam to have been wrong here. That being said, there are a few things that should not go unstated in spite of this. First of all, whether there is room for Sam to be in the wrong here or not, that certainly does not justify a lot of the actions that I am here to criticise in the next three chapters of this video. Secondarily, a lack of evidence does not intrinsically mean that we should jump to the conclusion that the accuser was lying. While no one should refuse to listen to the other side of things by any means, that does not mean that people should outright take to the other extreme and outright accuse the accuser of lying. TLDR, don't make an utter mockery of the situation and treat it with a sense of balance, please. Either way, the situation left the Yu-Gi-Oh community very split with one side backing LeBlanc and the other condemning him, something that becomes very important as we go into the next chapter. The main reason I have for making this video is that, whether the allegations presented by Sam are true or not, that does not justify the frankly disgusting reaction that a vocal part of the Yu-Gi-Oh community had. And I'm not even talking about when the allegations came out, I'm talking about when almost a month later, YCS Lyon 2023 was held and LeBlanc would walk away with a first place finish. The outrage from the community at this was understandable as far as I see it, but one thing that should not be tolerated is the way that the allegations against against LeBlanc were treated like an utter joke by people who were tripping over their feet to bat for him. And I ain't even talking about the usual internet stuff like people not realising when a joke crosses the line. Cause joking is one thing, but people actively mocking people for being concerned that an alleged predator is being accepted by the community is another entirely. There were two people who seemed to be friends with LeBlanc who had posted a group photo with him. One of which, Nesh TCG, had someone reply to this with constructively critical concern, and he gets on his high horse about how no one can tell him what to post. The level of smugness here really bothers me. You don't get to actively grandstand about how you are a free man and you can do what you want, and act like that helps your case here. Especially with the incredibly flippant way that you seem to be treating someone who has genuine concern for the crowd that you get involved with. Dear lord, this literally amounts to nothing more than the you're taking away my free speech argument. Yes, Nesh, you do have the right to be around whatever crowd you see fit. However, someone trying to make sure that you don't hang around an alleged predator is not a case of your freedom being infringed upon. It's someone having a degree of concern for you and trying to help you make better choices, not take your right to make the choice away. If we follow this logic for a bit here, let's say that person A says that they want to go to a fast food restaurant and person B tells them that it's bad for their health and they should eat better than that. Does this mean that person B is taking person and A's autonomy away. Because by your logic it would, and that notion is frankly ridiculously disingenuous. It's a deconstructive argument that seeks to brand the opposition as trying to restrict you instead of actually engaging with what they said like a civil adult would. A worse instance of this picture being posted, however, was when it was done by professional Yu-Gi-Oh player and then YouTuber Hani Jahari, as he had captioned it with us hanging out while y'all mad as shit, showing that he sees the outrage that people were feeling due to the situation and he seems to have little to no care for it, at least not enough care to take the situation seriously. However, that didn't seem to last very long, as after Hani had received backlash about this, he would delete his Twitter and all of his YouTube videos, at which point he would make this statement on Facebook. I'm done doing content creation, thanks for everyone that supported. It's hard to get in front of a camera in 2023 without people judging who you are, or who you associate with. Yeah, you post a picture of you hanging out with someone who has been accused of the things that LeBlanc has been accused of, and you actively mock people for being concerned about it in the process. And after you see people getting annoyed at you for doing so, you cower away and complain that you feel judged for those you associate with. To which, I must just say to cry more, because people have every right to insult your back after you indirectly take the mick out of people, 
Marvel, who the initial tweet was seemingly made to concern. You aren't in much of a position to complain about how you feel judged after you poked the hornet's nest with as sharp of a stick as you could find. Just wanted to make a brief little post point here to talk about another take that I completely forgot to put in the script here. Most likely because it was so deranged that I completely shunned it from my memory. But either way, there was an instance of two well-respected Yu-Gi-Oh content creators, namely King Scarlet and Stevie Blunder, talking about how ridiculous people on LeBlanc's defense were, only to see a response from another one of LeBlanc's friends called Tiro, where he claims that they were diminishing his hobby and claiming that people were pathetic to follow them if the game is just rectangles to them. I got a few things to say here. First of all, Stevie never claimed that the game was all just rectangles to him. He was describing the game as cardboard rectangles to call upon how stupid people were to hold LeBlanc's talent in the game above the allegations that he's facing. If I were you, I wouldn't try to take his words out of context, as you do here, in an attempt to call people pathetic for following people for criticizing your friend. Secondly, if Chris wasn't a bad person, you wouldn't talk to him? Please don't tell me that you actually see this as a compelling argument. And finally, there is something here I just don't get. When Blunder tries to hold people accountable for treating such serious allegations as if they were nothing above LeBlanc just being good at the game, how is he diminishing your hobby? If you have to cope so hard to throw LeBlanc a bone that you have to say that people are ruining the game by treating Sam with respect, then quite frankly you need to grow up and shut up. And this is about as much of the general pro LeBlanc arguments that I want to cover from the general community, as if I went any deeper I would probably just end up repeating myself for the most part. But now, let's talk about the team that LeBlanc had represented at YCS Lyon, something that is frankly gonna need a chapter all on its own. So one thing that you may not know if you aren't familiar with the Yu-Gi-Oh! competitive scene is that despite it being a 1v1 style game, top performing players are often signed onto teams when playing at high level events. Raphael Nevin playing for Complexity Card Gaming in YCS Chicago 2019, Pascal Keem playing for Junk's Playground for YCS London 2019, and Marcus Patel playing for Team Disciples in the European Championship 2022 to name but a few well-known examples. The reason this is important was because LeBlanc Blanc was no different when playing in YCS Lyon 2023, as he was playing for a team called Source Gaming. Also check out all of the Source merch, uh, you know, check out our website, um, huge shout out to them for flying me out here, and uh... Source had been holding Chris very highly upon the news that he had taken the win for the event, and if you want to give them the benefit of the doubt for that, then don't bother, as they had released a response to people's concerns about LeBlanc on their Twitter, and to call it pretty disgusting would be putting it lightly. It is with a heavy heart that conversations like this must be had. Unfortunately, the world we live in may not always be the kindest. Abuse of any kind should never be tolerated. For any victim out there, you should always feel safe and free to speak out and hold others accountable for their actions. We have taken the time to look further into these allegations as they are not something we take lightly. At this current moment, no evidence has been found to prove the allegations against Christopher to be factual. Christopher has also denied said allegations. As it stands, we have not made any decision to remove Christopher from our team and organization. Rest assured, any member of Source Gaming that is proven to engage in such conduct will be removed from our team immediately. Source was created by a group of friends that love to travel and play Yu-Gi-Oh! Many players in the community have found many great friendships through this trading card game. Since the day we've started, almost three months ago now, our message has always been about spreading love, having great energy, and caring for those around you. If you're reading this and have any further comments, we'd love to discuss with anyone replying to this. However, we will not tolerate insults and attacks. Please ask all the questions you may have. However, all debates will only be entertained with logical explanations, factual statements, concrete evidence, and reasoning. I never thought I would see an official statement that carries just as much corporate speak as it does debate me bro energy, but here we are. And if it wasn't enough how much Source seems to be tiptoeing around what LeBlanc actually was accused of, in a way that leaves those who don't know the context in the dark if they were only to read the statement, there were also a few other statements that they made during this so-called debate that take what little goodwill you might be able to draw from this response, and just throws it out the window. If these guys really want to try and debate me bro their way out of this one, then let's see if they can even pull that off. First of all, someone had raised a very important question. How much evidence would you expect from someone who is making an allegation of SA? Only for their response to be stories from mutual parties, photo slash video evidence, and police reports slash statements. The first and last of these three don't actually prove much as they both seem to be tied 
types of evidence built on testimony. So even if Sam had both, which I struggle to see how she possibly could in the case of a story from LeBlanc himself, you would still have the wiggle room to say that it doesn't prove anything. The only one of these three that you could say would be bulletproof in terms of proving the allegations would be recordings of the incident. Because yeah, let's just expect the victims of SA to have a recording of such a trauma-inducing event if they want to have any action taken against the one abusing them. It comes down to the fact that it's pretty disgusting of you to expect that of someone. And do keep the random tangent about how both parties were young in mind for later. It will be important in just a sec, despite it adding absolutely nothing to the question that was being asked here. The next tweet was when Source was asked about what they thought of an instance where LeBlanc had called the allegations childish, and they responded with three sentences. None of them actually answer the question, but the last one being the most important here, as they outright accuse Sam of making her allegation for the sake of destroying LeBlanc. Remember when they said in their statement that they only wanted conversation that was based on facts and logic and reason and they didn't want attacks? Yeah, it doesn't look like they do. And how about we follow the precedent set forth by the first tweet about how Sam would need very specific kinds of evidence in order to make her side worth listening to? Let's apply it here, because the only way that you could definitively prove the positive claim that Sam made this allegation to destroy LeBlanc is if you had a confession of such. So it's okay for you to make assertions that would need very specific kinds of evidence that you do not supply, but she can't. Nice to know the double standard that you are literally using to silence an alleged SA victim. Good lord. And the last is a tweet from another Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTuber called Distant Coda, where he makes note that being 17 does not excuse the actions that LeBlanc was alleged to have taken. And Source responds by saying that while that is true, the lack of evidence is what makes the allegations nothing more than allegations. While I do agree with that, it doesn't at all have anything to do with what Coda was actually saying here. After following the logical rabbit hole presented, by talking about the ages of LeBlanc and Sam earlier, Coda makes note that none of that has any impact on the actual issue at hand here, and yet you respond by bringing up a factoid that, even correct, doesn't have anything to do with what Coda is saying here. It just feels that you had backed yourself into a corner and you tried to pull on whatever you can just to get yourself out, even if it has nothing to do with what's actually being discussed at this point. But on that note, we could go a little more in depth about LeBlanc's actions surrounding the situation, but I don't particularly think that they would add all too much to the conversation here. I suggest you watch this video by Stevie Blunder if you're interested though, because now it's time that we wrap this up. After going over all of this, I must make my final conclusion very clear. While Sam's initial allegation did have missing evidence, I won't deny that, that is no excuse for people to treat the situation with as little tact as some of these people did. I don't care if LeBlanc is your friend or if he's really good at resolving halfness. That is no excuse to mock people who are concerned for you hanging around him, especially when the backlash you get gets you to deplatform yourself. And nor does it justify making bogus arguments to defend him. And I really could could not give one less of a flying frick if he won your organization a YCS. That is not grounds for you to yell, debate me bro, at the top of your lungs, only to set up logical trappings for yourself that showed, to me at least, that getting people to shut up is what you were after here. And no matter what side of the fence you sit on in terms of Sam's allegations, there is one thing that I think we can all agree on here. Yu-Gi-Oh has suffered a long-lasting stigma of being for fat nerds. This game gets labeled by most people as a toxic boys club, and this kind of thing happening is actively going to make that stigma worse for everyone involved. And I really wouldn't want this to be something that causes someone to turn down giving the game a shot when Yu-Gi-Oh is more fun of a game now than it has ever been in my opinion. We could be doing so much more for the community at large if we, you know, don't do the exact thing that would cause people to stay as far away from our community as possible. With the release of things like Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duel, the rise of budget options for people who don't want to break the bank on cards, and the great collection of content creators surrounding the game of all shapes and sizes, it really does bother me that this may have caused some people to turn down joining a community that they would have easily enjoyed being a part of. TLDR, the Yu-Gi-Oh community is, on the whole, pretty great actually, but there definitely is a subsection of the community that needs to realize that they need to grow up. And with all that said, thank you for watching this video. This one has been more of a passion project on my end, and I really wanted to get it out, but I also wanted to make sure I hammered it out as much as I could. So thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.